Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth and last part of our disaster scenario training conversation. We are now going to look at where and how we should train, and then at some basic suggestion that I acquired, mostly doing mistakes or committing mistakes that I want you, don't want you to actually do yourself. Where do you want to train? Well, the most important distinction is probably are you familiar or not with locations that you will be acting? Because that obviously changes a lot. Think of different possible environments. Cultural property can be underground, can be underwater, as you see in the picture, in, located in mountainous terrains. It has completely different challenges than if uh, your museum, for example, is located in a desert. They can be in archaeological digs, still there, where they, uh, they are actually almost in the ground. They can be collected inside museums, so in sometimes uh, public buildings or on private property. Think how challenging it can be if a collection, if pieces of art are actually stored inside a skyscraper. Scraper. And if you need to intervene in those sort of environment, absolutely complicated, complex, very, very difficult, absolutely needs to be trained before. To look at training locations, we also consider, well, if you have one or more objects that we need to take out. You know, are there multiple objects? Maybe they can just fill one table and that is it is, that it's it. Are we speaking of rooms? Now we're already enlarging a little bit. Are we speaking of whole floors that we need to look at to protect? Look at the picture, you know, how do I get to the uppermost part of it? Is it one building? Or are you speaking of more buildings, different locations, even different entities, you know, religious, secular, private, public. Uh, some museums have, have outposts uh, in, in different parts, sometimes very far away. All these present particular challenges if you are looking at disasters. If you're looking at train location, you start more inside your comfort zone. What are your own facilities? Walk through them, get familiar with them, feel at home, but also get to know what, what home is. Very often, you know, we don't take enough time to actually access all those different parts. And do we have a permanent storage? If the permanent storage is permanent, that has probably smaller uh, challenges. On the other hand, are we looking at other people's facilities? Are we away, away outside our institution, outside our uh, the place where we live? Are we even in a different nation? Are we abroad? Do we need to move places to short-term temporary storage storages? How short-term? Why short-term? Do we have long-term storage facilities? How are the uh, requirements? to actually have uh, efficient facilities. Are they giving us, uh, are they guaranteeing our, uh, the security of the pieces? Are people who work inside safe? Um, do we even want to move the pieces from our institution to a, a temporary storage? Only if the security there is actually better, if the conditions are better. Otherwise, we are putting those pieces at risk for, for no reason. Important point is we need to manage space and time because these, these, these spatial distances actually add complication, they add to the complexity. They also mean we will need more time, more resources to actually go to them and act um, in an efficient way to save our culture property. Another important principle is definitely security. As we already said, we're not going to move pieces if you're not, you're not secured. Is the security in our institution good enough? Do we need to improve it? Do we need to hire more personnel? What other possibilities do we, do we have? What happens in case of disasters? Will the guards that we normally have even show up for work? If you look at how to train, we are looking 
uh, from a perspective, passing a little bit more from the theoretical part to the practice. So, so what, what are some shortcuts, some suggestions, some tips? Well, if you look at disaster scenario training, I will definitely use simulations. Do not use the real pieces, use mock pieces, use uh, simulacres. But also there's possibility to, to simulate. Uh, uh, sometimes in e-learning courses, you can get in additional information and that puts you in a better position to respond. Sometimes it's necessary to uh, um, participate in in-person activity, especially if, if you want to do practical things, you will probably need to be in person. There is a difference between individual and collective education and training. And obviously, in activities that we conduct internally to our institution or exercises where we actually include also external stakeholders. Uh, if you look at, at, at how we can structure what the phasing, let's say, of uh, disaster scenario training, what can we what can we envision? Well, I would definitely suggest to start from a risk assessment. What are the biggest risks for your for your collection? Anything that is in, in our red quadrant needs to be addressed. And then, what are the training gaps? You know, what are the shortcomings that we want to fix? Because that's important to be sure that we actually exercise those. Very important, if you are not in charge, please get authorization, formal authorization to actually conduct whatever you want you want to conduct. So that to be uh, have the proper backing as well. Then the next stop is develop a disaster uh, training scenario. And let's comment the, the picture on the left a little bit. Oh, we are simulating that there is a lightning that hits our museum. There is uh, uh, water that starts leaking in, but there is also fire. So the fire department comes. What do they use to extinguish the fire? More water. Now we have the fire problem is gone, but there's a lot of water inside the museum. OK, we need to move the pieces because we don't have enough room to keep them safe uh, inside. Where would we move them to our uh, short term temporary facility, storage facility, which is the uh, church nearby we have this agreement if happens something happens at the museum we can go to the church and vice versa inside the church we have the triage we look at those pieces we separate them what needs immediate attention what uh, can be stored locally what can be moved uh, already to a longer term storage facility and then you see there is a line we did not exercise the part where we transporting uh, the pieces to the deposit but the pieces should be ready so the next step would just be to load them onto trucks and, and move them away. This is how it looks in theory in our uh, very shortly summarized uh, uh, pictogram or infogram. And this is actually how it looked in real time. And believe me, people who saw it, the, the people, the, the inhabitants of that village, they loved it. The kids loved it. It's a great opportunity to actually have uh, media present, to involve all sorts of uh, politicians, local politicians, uh, a representative of the community. Do not forget your security forces and obviously the fire department. If you can, I always suggest bring, bring in the ladder truck of the fire department, bring in those blue light organizations. They just give that extra touch of color of action that is necessary. Also from a narrative perspective, from a mediatic perspective, you want to actually attract the attention of people because they might be induced to visit your museum and who knows, maybe participate in future exercises. Then we want to find resources and funds. And we already said we are not going to use the real uh, art pieces, but some simulacre or uh, mock items. And we need some packing and stuff, some containers, some boxes, sometimes uh, tailor-made for our pieces, dollies and cards. Some of them, are, some of the pieces are very heavy. We need to have personal protective equipment, safety first. And then uh, headlights, because we want to have a hands-free, but we need light because there might be no illumination. Video or camera, batteries, always keep batteries ready. And obviously your checklist to record where pieces are coming from and where they are going. Then it is time to wrap pieces, items, cultural pieces into bubble wrap. And then 
properly document them and fill boxes because at the end of the day that is was what our disaster scenario training will imply most of the time you conduct your training you move your pieces and when the exercise finishes as index you need to start immediately with conducting your evaluation you have your hot wash up you gather the people normally you start from the lower ranking to the, the youngest the less uh, experts and then slowly slowly you move up and they give ideas what they found good try to bring that in uh, as a best practice or as a good practice and what actually they did not like was what's difficult what uh, identifies some some shortcomings and then you can work at and then in improving maybe mod modifying your plan maybe acquiring new materials maybe designing new procedures very very important to me is the feedback so you want the feedback from the people that participated also from the external stakeholders fire department police uh, the military if they were there but also give them your feedback and do not please do not forget to thank them at the end of it it's very good to actually sit together maybe share a meal together and actually just show the appreciation appreciation can be shown in different ways possibly with a certificate, with a media, with a photo opportunity, visiting them in their institutions, opening your museum, I don't know, maybe with better prices, so that you build that personal relationship that is so important. Well, we've seen safety first is one, is probably the most important principle, people before object. That goes also for our employees, for the people that, that are participating and people before art absolutely please think outside your box that's an attitude change that i really enjoy do not only think what is your institution it's not only about you what about your neighbor your neighboring institution get that could require your help what if you are sent uh, or you're asked for help from abroad from a different institution um, there is many uh, possibilities to be activated and then maybe you can pass on some of the experience that you had and that you made and that you can be useful for others find the resources that's sometimes very challenging but there is possibilities and media can help you grow the network so get in touch with people go visit them invite them into your institution show them around and make them participate in the in your the, the disaster scenario training you cannot do it alone protecting cultural property is just too complex there's too much expertise that is needed you cannot do it alone as i said you know share your experience how are you going to do that well one way that i really like is the interaction with the media at the end you have those infographics you bring in the commander of the military the police the owner of the institution whoever participated in your exercises in your training promote your work create awareness try to expand your network to get people on board reward the participants and you can be very inventive in ways that you want to do that it getting uh, uh, positive uh, feedback or actually positive uh, reactions products from the media allows you to also to support uh, crowdsourcing uh, efforts and uh, why not also fundraising you know uh, you need to find the, the means to actually continue doing what you're doing and to do it better i want to conclude here we are at the end of our fourth and final part please train disaster scenarios Thank you very much. These are my contacts and I'm very eager to receive some feedback, questions or maybe suggestions to improve my product.